everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to another fan fiction. Today's fan fiction is going to cover the premise, what if Anakin didn't burn? So he still got sliced up by Obi-Wan, but he didn't burn alive. Now Anakin was destined to be twice as powerful as the Emperor, easily, as stated by George Lucas himself. However, when it came to his destiny, he lost to Obi-Wan Kenobi on Mustafar. Kenobi sliced his limbs off and Anakin burned alive by the lava river bank. As if losing all of his limbs wasn't enough, his burns were actually what caused the most damage. As we know in Star Wars, limbs can be reattached, and while they did remove a significant amount of his overall force abilities, including his main power, which many might not know about, it was the ability to see into the future. This completely seized once Anakin lost to Obi-Wan. And it was actually his burns that caused the most difficulty, as stated in the Revenge of the Sith Jr. novelization. His burns were what created the most difficulty, the book says, in his recovery. This was something the droids as well pointed out to Sidious when they were reconstructing him. They were stating how his nerves had burnt off, so replicating them would be almost impossible of a feat to connect to his cybernetics. Here is an excerpt from the book itself, and then we can continue with the fanfiction. The amputation alone would have been a simple matter of replacement. It was the burns that made matters so difficult. Special connections would be required to overcome the scarring. Worse, Darth Vader's lungs had been seared by the fire. He would need a permanent ventilator system in order to breathe. And do it, the Emperor snapped. So this caused Vader to be so weakened on top of losing his limbs that it diminished his full potential to only 80% of the Emperor's full power. Vader suffered from many limitations, not just in his overall power due to his burns, but to his potential and life. So what if Vader didn't burn? What if Anakin was sliced into the several pieces that he was, as fate would have it, but his clothing didn't catch fire? This means if he just landed, you know, a foot or a little more away from the brink of the shore, his clothes may not have caught fire, which resulted in his entire body burning. If Vader didn't burn, you might say Obi-Wan would have killed him, for sure. Well, not exactly. In the novel, it explains how Obi-Wan didn't have time to go down the hill as he saw the Emperor's shuttle arriving overhead. Not to mention, if he got stuck down there and couldn't make it back up, he'd be dead for sure by the Emperor. Or the lava. Palpatine's arrival meant Yoda failed. Or worse, he was dead. Anakin would be taken by Sidious to the medical facility on Coruscant. His limbs would be added back via cybernetics within moments, and he wouldn't require any of the facial armor Vader needed. Anakin would look the same as he did before Mustafar with his Sith robes on. While I've seen many pics of Anakin in Vader's armor without the helmet, it looks really cool, but I don't think it would be his actual armor if he didn't burn. Sidious used the lowest grade cybernetics and parts for Vader's reconstruction and suit to punish him into his downfall. Here, he would probably just give him mediocre armor to which Anakin would upgrade later on if he wanted. His powers wouldn't be as high as if he had all of his limbs, which of course he didn't have them all after Attack of the Clones, but I digress. Anakin would lead the Empire with Palpatine and own his skills in the dark side. The Empire wouldn't be able to hide the fact that Anakin, the Jedi Knight, turned into a Sith Lord, because uh, they'd see his face. But I'm sure Palpatine would say he was the only Jedi that protected the Emperor during the Jedi betrayal that he framed them for. Now a bit of a backstory. In the Revenge of the Sith novel by Matthew Stover, during the fight with the Jedi on Mace's team, Palpatine recorded himself being arrested by them, but faked everything in the recording. Mind you, it was a voice recording, saying things like, why are you arresting me, please stop, this is treason, as he winked at them and then killed them. He was sadistic and smart, he was always covering his tracks. Anakin would fail to learn force lightning due to his cybernetic limbs, however that would probably be the extent of his limitations force-wise. He would go on to become more powerful than Sidious after maybe 10 years of training. Keep in mind, Sidious would also be training as well during this time, becoming more powerful. Now if Anakin was unharmed, he would kill Sidious in probably just a few short years after Revenge of the Sith, maybe five tops, but now that he lost all of his limbs, I feel like that gives him a little more time that he needs in order to own all of his new abilities. And I mean, hey, it's the Emperor here, he's extremely powerful. Anakin, or Vader, eventually overthrows the Emperor after about 10 years. In a fit of rage, he finally realizes he can never bring Padme back. He and Sidious fight, and it's definitely a very close call, but Anakin's powers are beyond the Emperor's now. After a decade of training, it's not really that easy for the Emperor. Vader eventually uses the Force to crush the Emperor as he had tried in Revenge of the Sith, but to no avail. Vader becomes the Emperor of the Galaxy. 
He uses technology the Empire has to clone and regrow his limbs, and has them attached. Anakin is now fully restored to his maximum potential. He now directs the entire efforts of the Empire to tracking Kenobi down. With the acceptance that Padme can't be brought back, at least for now, Vader is hell-bent on revenge against the man who betrayed him. The man who caused the death of his wife, in his eyes, of course. Had Obi-Wan not shown up, then he would have spoken with Padme and probably left Naboo with her, which was mentioned in Legends. And I believe it was in the novel The Rise of Darth Vader or there was The Rise and Fall of Darth Vader, which are two different books, but I believe that inner monologue was in there somewhere when he was at the Jedi Temple reflecting on what might have been. Vader would fail in finding Kenobi until Kenobi came to him as he did in the original trilogy. The two would meet aboard the Death Star and Vader would destroy Kenobi in the A New Hope novel, Kenobi's inner monologue while he fights Vader mentions how powerful Vader is and how imposing he was. Let alone now at full power, he'd crush all the competition who faced him. So that's a pretty easy scenario if we go with that one, but let's change it up a little bit and make it a little more interesting, shall we? The other option we're going to go with is if Vader finds Kenobi through his Imperial Reach, shows up on Tatooine much to his distaste, and challenges Kenobi to a duel maybe 15 years after Revenge of the Sith, so five years after he kills the Emperor, and five years before A New Hope. This would make Luke about 14 years old. Now, not without first sensing his intentions of hiding here and realizing he is protecting someone, does Vader actually end up killing Kenobi. Then he walks over to Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen's house, slaughters them, and takes his son, Luke. Vader trains Luke the same way he trained Galen Merrick in Force Unleashed. Luke becomes the ultimate apprentice and they go on to control the galaxy and wipe out the rebellion. Luke sort of hates Vader at this point because he was 14 when Vader took him from his family and killed Obi-Wan and killed Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen. But if you've ever seen Force Unleashed, then you know how he's going to do it. So the Death Star never explodes because, well, Luke is with Vader. Bail Organa hears of what happened on Tatooine, that Vader took a boy who was his son. Obi-Wan would commune with Yoda about what happened through the Force. After all, Qui-Gon taught Yoda and Yoda taught Obi-Wan, so it's only natural that Obi-Wan would speak to Yoda about this. Yoda would find a way to reach out to Bail Organa. So let's go a little far-fetched and say he would do this by either using the Force to commune with Leia, which is kind of a lame scenario, hoping, you know, she's receptive enough to hear his plea. Or he goes in his pod that he landed in at the end of Revenge of the Sith to fly to Alderaan and speak with Bail. The time to train Leia was now. Leia would come to Dagobah and train with Yoda for the next 10 to 15 years, becoming a fully-fledged Jedi Knight. This puts us almost around the time of Return of the Jedi if we just go with 10 years. She is extremely powerful. Once she's ready, she would go with Yoda to face Vader and Luke, aboard the Death Star, which never exploded, and now is just bigger and more powerful than ever. She planted hefty seismic charges within the reactor's core and set a timer. If she and Yoda were to fail, Vader would win, but the Death Star would blow up. Leia would most likely be able to cause enough conflict within Luke to create a wedge between him and Vader. Yoda would tell Luke how Vader killed their mother and how he did all of these terrible things during Order 66, to which Luke had no idea and wasn't really a fan of Vader anyways, he was just tortured and blackmailed into doing this. Now Luke was told by Vader that the Jedi killed his mother, and that the Jedi ruined the entire galaxy, and if it wasn't for his father to help save it, then everything would be so different. Luke would be super brainwashed, but I believe Leia and Yoda would speak enough truth to instill some doubt within the boy, and to make him switch sides. Leia would be able to turn Luke, to tell him to trust his feelings that something has always been off about their father. Now at this point, explosions start to erupt far away in the Death Star, sounding the sirens to go off. Imperials scattering everywhere to leave the station before it blew, just like in Return of the Jedi. Vader would fight them both, and when he kills Yoda, yeah, he kills Yoda at this point, Yoda's super old and this is full power Anakin here, so I mean, hey. Vader then takes Luke's hand off as well. Now, he's having some trouble fighting Leia, and not because she's a better fighter than Luke, but because she reminds him too much of Padme. And all during their fight, he sees Padme, causing him to falter. He remembers that Padme is dead and finally chokes Leia and slams her to the ground. Vader has won. He walks up to Leia to kill her. Crimson lightsaber raised as he watched the reflection of it in her terrified eyes when she whispers softly under her breath, looking down to the floor. There is still good in you. Vader is frozen. This is something his dead wife would have said. And as he stepped back, he saw not Leia, his daughter, but 
Padme, his wife. Surely a trick was being played on him. How are you doing this? He said. Get out of my head. Vader was stricken with the sight of his dead wife. Could she be doing this? No, she wasn't touched with the Force. There was no way, was there? Vader looked back and saw Leia wiping the blood off of her broken nose. As he looked over to Luke, who was semi-unconscious grasping the stump for a hand that Vader left him with. And Yoda, the little green Jedi Master was nowhere to be found. Only his robes lay where he was killed, but no body in sight. Vader, Anakin, dropped to his knees before Leia. He helped her wipe the blood off of her face as he admired the architecture of his naval ship, gazing around as if looking at her would be too painful. All of this for you, my love, to bring you back. Anakin spoke to neither of his children, essentially speaking to the walls. Anakin realized now that all of this evil, all of this death, was for naught. For no matter how many planets he controlled or star systems he seized, how many sentients he killed, she would never come back. He had torn apart the entire galaxy to find a way to bring Padme back to life, and all of it to get right here to this very moment. He wouldn't make the same mistake twice. Observing his daughter, he looked over to Luke who began to limp over to them, holding his handless arm with the other. Time stood still for Anakin as the sirens blazed. We need to leave now, Leia said. Vader motioned for them to come with him. As he led them to the hangar bay, where Imperials were in a frenzy trying to get any vessel to take them as far away as possible. As several stormtroopers ran to one of the last pods, no bigger than the one C-3PO and R2-D2 boarded in New Hope, Vader used the force to strangle them in the air and crack their necks before he let go of them as their lifeless bodies dropped to the shiny floor. Anakin motioned for his two children to enter the pod, which really only could fit one, but if they squeezed, it might work. Leia looked at her father. What about you, father? We have to find another. Anakin put the back of his finger to Leia's cheek as a tear streamed down her face, catching it with his black glove. The look in Anakin's eyes told his kids everything they needed to hear. It is too late for me, my daughter. As Luke piped up to encourage his father to find another ship so they could all leave. My son, go. Be a better man than I was. Be more like your mother. Your sister will show you the way. I raised you with my own anger, my own hatred for myself. I failed you. As the hangar bay began to explode in flames all around, Anakin knew what he had to do. Luke and Leia began to tear up as they stood their ground and vowed not to leave him. Leia told him they were a family, and that their fates would be the same. Anakin put a hand on both of their shoulders, as if he were about to embrace them until he pushed them into the pod and sealed the door. Luke and Leia banged at the window and watched their father be engulfed in flames as he stood before them, smiling, closing his eyes as the fire took him. He was going to be with their mother once again after so many years. The pod blasted off into space as they were pushed deeper by the explosion of the Death Star. Anakin sacrificed himself at the last moment for his children. He knew Padme would do the same and he knew Padme was watching. Leia and Luke would go on to train a new school of Force users, combining the light and the dark sides of the Force to create the ultimate and most well-rounded Force users in the galaxy. They would instill ideologies of the Jedi with just a few of the Sith, bringing balance to the Force. Hope you guys enjoyed this fanfiction. I figured I would go in some daring endings here, and you know, it was a bit of a quick turn with Vader deciding to turn to the light side as he saw Padme within Leia, but I feel like it's something that would probably translate better if it were animated or if it were live action, but I feel like, you know, for this fanfiction, it gets the point across, and uh, this is just one alternate scenario. This is one alternate what if. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave a like on this video if you did like it. And if you'd like me to make another scenario, please comment down below and give me some different ideas and topics. Check me out on Spotify if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.